Good evening, everyone. This is Robert Stevenson. It is 6.02 on uh, the 9th of uh, January. I'm going to uh, call to order the South Pacallan Granville Regional School District School Committee meeting for this evening. Um, can I get a motion to enter into the meeting? So moved. So moved. It's a whole bunch of people. Can I get a second? Second. All right. Since we have a couple of our uh, school committee members remote tonight, we're going to do roll call votes for everything. So we're going to enter into the meeting. Uh, Pam, can I get a uh, vote for you? Yeah. Ryan? Yes. Ted? Yes. Ross? Yeah. Erica? Yes. Rob's a yes. Motion passes 600. Um, let's see. Can I get everyone to, to uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I the pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ted, I could hear you standing. Good job up there. All right. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, okay, opening ceremony. Okay, so we have our consent agenda tonight. We've got some fundraisers. We've got an out-of-state uh, field trip. This is the uh, speak now or forever hold peace moment. Anybody got any issues, concerns, items that we need to pull out of that? All right. Uh, warrants, we've got some warrants going around here. As long as we've got four, we're good, which I think we are. Right? Isn't that Aaron? You just need four? Four signatures? Good. Uh, correspondent, Superintendent Willard. Do you have any correspondence? You don't have any correspondence. Look at that. I'm telling Pam, keep track. We started at 602. We're going for the record. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not <laughs> All right. Uh, public comment. We have absolutely nobody here except for us. Um, so, Magnolia, short and sweet. No, I'm joking. <laughs> it's up to you. You're up. Okay, so this past Sunday, because of the snowstorm, um, NHS students, a part of seniors helping seniors, went out to help local seniors shovel walkways, stairs, and anything else that needed to be cleared. Um, it was pretty okay, but we're working on a few kinks. Um, this past Tuesday, the 2nd, Student Council provided breakfast for teachers on their professional development day. Rehearsals for our upcoming musical, The Lord on the Roof, have begun as of this Monday, and performances will be held April 4th to the 6th. That's where this one went. Actually, no, we did it. Never mind. Um, I Ready for Grade 7 to 9 are this Wednesday, which is math, and then Thursday's English. Finals for Semester 1 are next Wednesday and Thursday, with the accompanying, accompanying AP Lang and AP Lit mock exam midterm slash final. Um, on next Thursday, the 18th, the freshman class is hosting a game night as a fundraiser and class bonding event. And then on oh, that was Thursday, the 18th, on Friday, the 19th, the 7th and 8th grades are hosting a winter and summer formal dance. And that's Fantastic. it. Fantastic. Look at that. <laughs> Good job. All right. On to educational presentation. I'm assuming our first one is going to get pushed because Mr. Carmel is sick. Out of here. Oh, great. So, so, see, I'm cutting uh, into my time. This is not good. Sorry, this is just <laughs> easy. This is just, um, we're bringing forward, we got a $14,000 grant, and it was a competitive grant for the deeper learning implementation of what that means is we get $7,000 for teacher stipends for uh, professional learning outside of their school day, and we get $7,000 for supplies and materials. Uh, DESE does a kaleidoscope. Um, which is best educational practices. And they are going to be, our district will be partnering with DESE's Kaleidoscope team to work on building deeper learning, um, implementing tools and routines um, used during professional development for instruction to align to deeper learning and to foster effective pedagogy, which just means better teaching, um, more effective teaching, really working on developing the student's ma um, mastery, identity, and creativity on um, Bloom's higher order thinking, not just at memorization and applying, but really being able to take information and doing stuff with it and applying it in different places. Um, calibrating with leaders, uh, supporting leaders and teachers, and uh, supporting leaders and strengthening coherence across all the instructional systems in support of deeper learning. Um, they're really going to be focusing on the 14 practices um, that are part of the building thinking classrooms and mathematics, grade K through 12 teaching practices that enhance learning, the book. Um, they're already familiar with the book, um, and they're just going to um, take the work a little bit deeper. 
So it's teaching students, all students, to become critical thinkers, effective problem solvers, clear communicators, and competent mathematicians, and the district's strategic objective of engagement. We'll be accepting that fourteen thousand dollar grant tonight. If you approve. So, Jen, is this for PD that um, has already been established um, for new PD? Um, or is this kind of just a, um, a bucket of money that when we have um, PD, this money can be used to apply to, to pay for it? No, this is designed for upcoming professional development because we haven't accepted the grant yet, so we haven't spent any money yet, but it's a continuation of work that we're currently doing. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Super. All right. Um, 2024-2025 calendar. Right, this is an interesting calendar, and I just want to point out a few changes that are a little bit different. Um, this is a weird one because of how Christmas and New Year's Eve falls uh, on the calendar. Uh, so what we met with our admin team, and our teachers really like having to come back to school and having a day of PD before the kids come back because it's mid-year, kind of like a nice check-in point about the district initiatives. So what we've opted to do is we, if you look at the calendar, we're going to have staff opening day on the 26th, a staff PD day on the 27th. And in doing, instead of adding our second PD day at the beginning of the year, we're going to have the students come on the 28th. And instead of having a collab day in the month of September, we're going to do a collab day on the 30th, uh, which is, would be a half day for students. And the teachers would stay and we could incorporate a little bit more of our PD since we're only having um, the one day of PD. What we are doing for our two days of PD, if you look down in January, uh, where the January 2nd and 3rd are going to be PD days for teachers because we usually do one day at the end, but it doesn't make sense to do one day and then bring the kids back for one day. So, the least interruption to student learning is to do two PD days that week. So the students will have two full weeks off from school. I'm glad mm -hmm. that no one will be complaining. And that mm -hmm. they'll start Especially a day early. Especially not the seniors. Yeah. 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 And yeah. And, yeah. and, yeah. and so we swapped the day at the beginning of the year for a day at, in um, January beach. And Easter helps them out too, because you get an extra long weekend for April oh, vacation. vacation. Oh, sometimes that helps. Wow. Yeah, that's not uncommon. No, no, I know. Yeah. I mean, they got a week, a week and a day. Mm -hmm. Wow. So we were kind of creative to keep it um, as least disruptive as possible for student learning. But we're going until the 23rd of June. Uh, 19th. No, that's with five oh, snow no, days. Oh, no, that's the 13th. The 13th. Oh, that's with five snow days. Okay, 20th. Okay. Five snow days. 13th would be our last day. I always kind of stick out. Okay. There. The 13th is good. Yeah, 13th. Then you do have to. Well, so we, we only have two else. snow days. We go, we go to the 17th. Is that how that works? Okay. All right. And how many, have we had any snow days yet? No. no. So we're at zero. Yeah. The dark board with my face will be coming up soon. <laughs> Seniors will start going, come board. on. Not that they can have them every year. We don't have snow days. We want these snow days. We'll have this year. Yeah, mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Now might be a good time to mention that the roads in Granville right now are treacherous. Yes, okay. I know. And I guess they're not much better around here. Oh, I lost you. No, can you hear it? Oh, now I can, yes. Okay. Obviously, the phone lines are not working that much better up there in Granville either. Well, I'm, the, the drive home was absolutely awful. One of the ones oh. I've had. Mm -hmm. Sure, it'll be. Sure, it'll be better tomorrow. If not, then we'll have a delayed opening or something. Well, this is when, this is when it's great when the superintendent gets to wake up at four in the morning to try to figure all this fun stuff. Right? I already have it on our talk. <laughs> My concern tomorrow is more uh, power. Oh, it's not icy. It's gonna be fifty degrees tonight. Oh, it's there we go. Flooding and power. Oh. Yeah. yeah. What we're concerned about for tomorrow. So we yeah, did get that message on. from Eversource. Yeah. yeah, you know we're watching. Hang in there. Yeah, you got you, you got still got power up there, Ted. Yeah. Okay. Good. No problem. No way. All right. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Okay. On to policies, which we've got none right now. 
Uh, okay, action item, Superintendent Willard. Move to approve consent agenda items as listed above recommended. So moved. Second. Second. All right, so we're gonna do roll call votes tonight. So Pam? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Uh, Erica? Yes. Russ? Yeah. Rob's a yes. Motion Rob, passes. Okay. Ted, Ted, sorry. Yes. Motion passes six zero zero. Move to accept the deeper learning implementation grant and approve expenditures as outlined in the terms of the grant recommended. So moved. Second. Anybody any questions on that? All right, we'll do a vote to approve. Pam? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Ted? Yes. Erica? Yes. Rob, Russ? Yes. Rob, say yes. Yours and my name is closed. <laughs> Motion passes 600. Move to approve the STGRSD calendar for the 24 25 school year recommended. So moved. Second. Right. <laughs> Pam, Pam, she, she, we got, we got extra stuff here. Um, all right. Any questions on that? All right. We'll do a roll call vote. Pam? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Ted? Yes. Erica? Yes. Russ? Yeah. Rob's a yes. Motion passes 6 0 0. All right. That's it. Uh, Superintendent Willard, so, update on goals. Yeah, so I just to do a quick mid-year update on my goals. Uh, goal one, um, very similar from last year, it's our uh, literacy initiative, and we are on target um, with all of the benchmarks at the beginning of, that I set at the beginning of the year. Um, the second one is creating meaningful, actionable goals. Um, and again, on that one, um, I've actually spent a lot more time with building principles this year than I have in the past. Um, so it's, I, I kind of feel that this year I've been a superintendent, but also much more of a hands-on mentor to, because although Mike and Serena have both been assistant principals, they've never been in the principal role and it's very, very different. So um, I've done a lot more mentoring on day to day. Um, we do talk about student data and growth and assessment, but more of my time than I anticipated has been spent on personnel matters and um, which is great because that's what you want to do is to be as a support for your um, new administrators. Um, but I have spent a lot more time than I had anticipated um, with the administration. Um, again, as you all know, we are still updating our policy manual once we get um, the policies back, we can start making the procedure book because we want them to align. Um, and I wasn't at the last meeting due to an illness. Um, did she say when we're going to be getting? No, I asked her. She said there, she's going to check on it. Uh, it was funny because Pam and I were talking about this at, at the subcommittee meeting. Um, there, we're good at, we're getting into a couple of the sections, but whatever the student sector, or the, the, teacher sections are stuff like that where we've got a number of the policies that we want to pull out and we've got to put them in procedures yes. but i am well i suppose we don't we we can we don't have to approve them until we say what i'm worried about is there's some of these policies when um there's a complaint about a teacher if there's a complaint about this okay. right so when we get into k all of those need to go into the procedures book. Yes. I want to make sure that we see what that looks like sure. before we go and jettison the policy. So, so because, creating procedures beforehand. Well, like, you know what we want to be, you know what we're going to want to do with yeah. these. I want to be able to see them and say, okay, look, before we vote this and adjust it to where you take all of those, those um, sections out there that mm -hmm. that's going to do that's going to cause sort of an accounting of what's what's happening. The the alternative is, is that we're going to put this in a procedure manual and we're going to follow the procedures. Mm -hmm. Well, if we jettison and vote out the policy and the procedures aren't written yet, that's going to Good. cause a concern. I'm thinking what's going to my take on it yeah. was what we would do, like with the uh, curriculum complaint one or sure. the complaint is that would become a procedure. I don't think we would edit it that much. There is a tweak I would make after speaking to some other superintendents on some of the policies. Yeah. When they put a committee together, they um, do include a member of the school committee on it. Um, we don't have that in ours. Um, and it's best practice that if you're like, 
transparency purposes, I really think we all need to be like working together. Um, but I'll I'll put together what um, an exemplar from another school district. But I know I know what you're saying. You know, like, I if, do if know we what can, you're saying. We can go through what we want to check and what we want to adjust and how we want to make how we want to change it. Mm -hmm. But I it, maybe what we'll do is when we get to K, and we're going to do that master sort of approval of all the policies and K. Like we're not going to do these one by one. We're going right. to do them chapter by chapter. When we get to the K section, if the procedures haven't caught up to where that is, then what we'll do is we'll pull out those two or three and we'll say, we're going to hold these approvals okay. until the procedures are up and running or that they're written so that we know that it's done so that we can get rid of the old policy. I would just like to get started. Yeah, no, no, me too. Like, this is like my summer. Break. I know. Like, yeah. I, I would like to have it done by uh, September of next year. Well, what I'm hearing Jen say is that really the procedures don't really need to get, entire procedures don't really need to get written. Basically, if we're taking policies and, and, be, and moving them from policy to procedure, yeah. then nothing's really, little will change that is just being relocated and, and just refined a bit. And we can. Right. Well, no, no, I, I know that, things. but we want to, but the challenge is is that we've run into instances, not recently, but in the last couple of years, where we weren't following the policies. And if we're gonna put them in procedures, I wanna make sure that the procedures are written in a way that we know that they're gonna get followed. And if they're not gonna get followed, I'm not interested in getting rid of the policy that has some sort of <laughs> hammer to it that we can actually make sure that it's followed through on unless it's going to be followed through on a, on a procedure side. Sure, but that's not our, you know, that's. Well, right now it's, right now it's a policy. So we do have oversight. I understand right. it wants to go into a procedure, but unless we've got the procedure written and, and some sort of assurance as to how it's going to be done, I, I'm really unwilling to, to change the policy. So I have a question for you. Did you receive the recent policy newsletter from Mass? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I did. If I did, I haven't read it. Okay. So in the in um, December's Mass bulletin, um, they list a policy newsletter um, of recent Mass policies that have been added or reviewed. Yeah. Um, so what I will do is I will take a picture of this and I will send it um, to to you. And we need to, some of these are policies we haven't gotten to yet, yeah. but some of them are ones that we did early in the alphabet that we've already gone through. So I just want to make sure that the any changes that we've made are consistent with the most recent ones that MASK has made. Oh, so, that makes um, sense. I want to notify Liz um, yeah. of you know, and I'm sure Liz is on top of this policy newsletter, but I just want to make sure that we're aligned with with that. Well, yeah, there's no sense in us going through all these, and then there's five that just got updated while we were going through the process. Right, exactly. So this is just this is something that we need to make sure that we look at at the next policy uh, subcommittee meeting. Okay. Which I think when is that next one coming up, Aaron? That we're okay. that Liz is coming. And then twenty third. Okay. And so then the last one has taken on a life of its own this year. Um, so not only did I um, join the Rural School Coalition, I just joined um, the Connecticut. I'm on the executive committee for the Connecticut Valley Superintendent's Roundtable, um, but I was just elected to be on their legislative committee. So I'll be representing um, the Connecticut Valley Roundtable, um, which is Connecticut Valley, Valley. Valley. No, Connecticut Valley oh. Superintendent. It's it's kind of valley, but it's a little bit bigger. Oh, um, okay. It has Hampshire, Franklin, and Hamden County in it. Oh, and they call it the Connecticut? Connecticut <laughs> Superintendent. Yeah, CBSR. Um, Why not anyway. call it the Tennessee? I mean, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but Connecticut Valley, that's what we're called. Anyway, so I joined that as well. Um, <laughs> since I drafted this, um, uh, we just found out on Friday afternoon as I was leaving that um, the governor did make uh, her nine seat cuts and spared regional transportation and rural school aid. As mm -hmm. you know, did send letters out um, to the governor and to Ann Gobi um, 
to advocate for not touching regional transportation. Um, so we've also met with our three towns. We're going to be having another round table. And now that we know about this vocational tuition, um, again, something that I wasn't anticipating when writing my goals, um, it's kind of taken out of life. So this is this has become a pretty big part of my job this year is navigating this and um, navigating the two new principles and um, trying to work through right now a budget for next year because our out of district costs, I can tell you already, are significantly higher than next year. So when you're talking to legislators and the House Ways and Means, we really, really need to advocate for rural school aid. It is extremely important. It is the only additional money we get besides the per pupil um, expenditure and, and, and the chapter seven. Right. It's gonna be like, it will say 35,000, but it'll look like 70,000 because we base our budget off of the governors. And at the end, it was the $60 per pupil versus the $30 per pupil. So it'll look like we got a $70,000 increase, but we really didn't. It's only. I got you. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. So we really have to advocate. Last year, um, it was funded at 15 million. Um, if they can keep it at 15 million again, we can absorb those four special ed teachers and include them in rural school aid funding. And it meets the criteria because we're keeping kids in district. Um, and it meets one of the criteria for rural school. So it's Whoever you can talk to, the people, everybody, all legislators, we've got to keep rural school aid funded. And it's just as important as, if not more important than the Student Opportunity Act. Like, I know some towns who have so much money that they're turfing fields with all their extra money that they have. Um, that would be a nice luxury to have. We're just trying to staff teachers. Yeah. So um, I get the Student Opportunity Act. I hear that it's great. But when we're turfing fields and we're fighting um, for special ed programs, I wow. need to make sure that we're being taken care of at the state level. So, governor's right. pretty adamant about taking care of us. Well, that's nice to hear, considering the news this morning was that the there are what three hundred and some million dollars behind <laughs> budget. That's why she just made all those cuts, but yeah. didn't touch us. And they touched the town. They touched the wrecks. Oh, they did. Yeah. Oh, oh. All right, uh, let's see. Mr. Trammell is not available this evening. He's a little under the weather. Um, so we don't have a director of finance and operations report. Um, subcommittees, um, negotiations. We've got one little item that we just need to throw out there. Um, we've got to make sure, I think we ran into an issue here last mm -hmm. week where there was nobody from the school committee at the meeting. Um, Jen and I had a conversation Anybody opposed to having me be an alternate member of the subcommittee for finance or for negotiations? That way, if, if what we'll do is when we have upcoming meetings, um, Ted, Desiree, and, and Russ are on that committee. Aaron's going to get confirmations that at least somebody's going to be there. Um, and then if there's one person going to be off or two people that can't make it, she'll reach out to me and see if I can, I can be there because we obviously can't have more than three. Um, and I want to make sure that you guys have an opportunity to go there, but we got to make sure that somebody's there because if they're not, we we just it, it's kind of a wasted meeting. Um, anybody have any issues with that? I don't think we need to take a vote on it. I just Ted, are you okay with that since you're on the committee? Yeah. Okay. All right. Perfect. Um, any updates? How are we doing on our negotiations? Uh, we just sent clerical back an offer we haven't heard, and we have another meeting. End of January. January 31st. Oh, January 31st. That's <laughs> And then we just planned something for January 31st. Well, maybe that's up there. What time uh, is that meeting at? Oh, but it's oh, it'll be perfect. We could go to negotiations and we'll go right into that meeting. It's three o'clock. Three o'clock. Oh, okay. 30. 30. Yeah. oh, perfect. Okay. That's perfect. Yeah. Well, then maybe that maybe that would be a good day. Yeah, that would be a great day. Um, finance. We are probably due for another meeting here this month. Do we have a date? Yeah, we do. We've already got one locked in, it's right? The 23rd? 24th. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So we'll get an update. Fun stuff like that. Um, LP back. I just signed a warrant for the corporation today. Um, 
You signed too? Well, not for the corporation, oh. but same warrants. Oh, okay. I don't have anything. Me either. Uh, policy, we're going to meet on the 23rd. Um, buildings and grounds, we probably need to have, we need to find out from uh, Mr. Amato when he's coming back for an update. Um, I'll check with Joe on that one. Um, ILT, do you guys have anything? We this upcoming Thursday is okay. been rescheduled. Um, I can't make that one because my kids, <laughs> a previous appointment from this week was rescheduled to that day. Um, so, um, Ryan, can you make Thursdays? I, I, I emailed Beth and said I could do it via Zoom, but I can't be in person. Okay. I could definitely listen. And I, who else is on our desert? Uh, desert. Right. I'm not going to be there. Kim's not going to be there. You're struggling. Who's going to be there? The teachers. teachers. Oh. And Beth? Yeah, mostly teachers. It's a teacher workshop anyway. Okay. And principals. All right. Jen said you're going to check to make sure. It sounds like a lot of the key players are, are not going to be there. Right. So we'll we'll see. Because well, originally it was supposed to be what? The day off. Oh. What else? Like, well, it's gonna be like oh yeah, that's, that's supposed right. to be the PD day, right? Oh, and they're like, no, let's have a meeting on the PD day. All right, uh, wellness. Anything? Yes, I'm scared. You're very sick. Um, oh. sped. We yeah. need to have a we meeting have ASAP because uh, Mr. Jamal and I met with Robin Dunn and started building the special ed budget for next year. Not pretty is the understatement of the world. Understand what they want. Okay. All right. So okay. that's Pam, Brian, and up. Erica. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um technology. We had our little uh we have a little workshop this this uh for our meeting tonight. We all yeah. turn the iPads on and <laughs> pull up sports center. So other than that, we're in good shape. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> We're going to work on boulders. Um, okay, capital committee. Anything? <laughs> Nothing yet. <laughs> so we're like a total business part. Russ, they beg to have you on this committee and have you on the capital committee thing, and they don't have any meetings. Not yet. Okay. It's usually January, February, oh, okay. March. Master plan. We haven't seen anything. Uh, so at the, planning board. Yeah. Working on that tonight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> athletics. We are, what we'll probably do for a meeting here soon. Um, last one we had was at the end of fall season. So we'll probably, I'll, I'll reach out to um, Serena and Mary and set something up. Um, legislative liaison is not applicable right now. Um, what would comment? We still don't have anybody. Um, okay, old business. Anything, anybody got anything for old business? Okay, new business. What Jen alluded to um, earlier, we had a conversation. I had a conversation with Jen last week um, concerning the subject of out of district tuition. Um, I had a conversation with Russ last week about this same thing, um, because in light of sort of the the revelations that we've got here in the last month. Um, we've got a law in the state of Massachusetts that indicates that the town should be paying for out of school, out of district tuition. Um, for our purposes, that would be any child that is not going to CTEC. It does not include um, any special ed out of district sort of accommodations that is borne by the district. Um, but if we look at the amount of money that we are spending as a district, for out of district tuition is in, in the area of about one million dollars a year, correct? Even the okay. people going to Vogue School. These are going to yeah, Vogue, Nazi Tech, yeah. Westfield Tech, um, Smith Vogue, yeah. all that stuff. Got it. So, so this is a law, Rob? Yes. Yeah, it's a law. That's that's the challenge about this. The law indicates that the towns are supposed to be paying for or bearing the cost of that. It is not something that the regional school districts are supposed to be bearing. Now, six, seven, eight years ago, when they redid the regional agreement they brought and they brought Granville in, when we were on a conversation with Desi, 
um, we were informed that the um, chairman of the school committee and the superintendent at that time um, were informed that it, it probably shouldn't be done this way and they indicated that they wanted to keep it. Um, I don't know why, it doesn't really matter why, um, but based so on the law that you're referring to was in the books already at the time. That I don't know. I, yeah, I think that Jen is nodding her head. Yes. So, and the Desi lady said, well, I questioned them and they said they wanted to keep it that way. I, I mean, I don't know. We could, it doesn't really, like I said, it doesn't really matter what, um, what, when we talked to Desi, um, Obviously, from a fiduciary perspective, it's certainly we're not talking about twenty dollars here. It's a significant amount of money here for the for the regional school district. Um, in order, my understanding when talking with Russ is that in order for this to be able to be addressed from a regional school district perspective, if we wanted to adjust it to follow the law. Um, we would need to open up the regional school agreement, which obviously would require a warrant, go to the three towns requesting that the, the um, regional school agreement be opened up. Um, we've had some sort of preliminary kind of, I, at the round table meeting, I was able to touch base with a couple of the, um, of the uh, selectmen. Um, I think there's a lot of, sort of uh, openness to try to make this as, I guess, as painless as possible. Obviously, to, we're basically dealing with about a $300,000 movement of funds from where they're being paid right now to where they, where they would need to get paid following that state law. Um, I think there's a lot of openness to sort of gradually doing that, whether it's like a five-year sort of phased-in plan um, but in order for us to even get to that, um, I think it's a good idea if we have a roundtable meeting inviting the select men and select, select people from the towns, us, Russ will be there, Jen will be there so that we can at least have an open conversation, lay it out on the table, what's the situation that we're in, maybe come up with some solutions because we're going to need everybody's sort of participation in this to sort of make this somewhat fair and, and obviously follow the law. Um, and when I talked to Russ, he thought that was a good idea. So right now what we're looking at is, um, we thought sooner the better, we've got an option of January 31st or February 1st at 5.30 here in the library or something like that probably. Um, so, those were the dates that Russ was available because we obviously want to, we, we need to make sure that Russ is here. Um, what you say? February 31st? Sorry, January 31st or February 1st. So it's a Wednesday or Thursday. Um, what did we just say? There's going to be a negotiations meeting on the 31st at two or something. So if we want to try to, it, it, is there a date? I mean, we can kind of send it out to all the select people and say, look, we're looking at doing this on January 31st. At 530, um, like everybody to be in attendance, it's not mandatory. Obviously, I'm hoping that there's at least one representative from each town that's going to be able to be in attendance. I'm hoping that we'll get more than that. Um, is there a day? Is anybody opposed to the 31st? Ted, does that? Yes, oh. yes I am unavailable the 31st, and I very much want to be there. Okay. Um, so my vote would be for February. What was it on? February 1st, the next day, Thursday. Yeah, I can do February first. I cannot do. Um, you January can't do February first. Okay. Is anybody got a problem with the first? You good? Russ, good. Okay. All right. So, Aaron, why don't we send it out um, and say that we would like to have a round? Their presence is requested um, for a roundtable meeting to discuss the uh, concern about out of district tuition. Um, and we're going to have it at 530 in the library, and we would hope that they could all come. And do we want to invite members of the um, finance. finance committee for the towns or no? I don't think so, because it's I would just suggest that. I, would I don't would know. This, my thoughts, Pam, is this is just about our regional agreement. Okay. 
Oh, yes, except it's about, it, but it very much affects the finances of the town. It does. So we do. Well, this, Pam, this, the other thing to remember, this is a first meeting. I, I have a feeling we're going to have to have follow-up meetings. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's just... Um, are you are you hearing this? And Ted, are you available on February first? Well, how did we lose Ted? We lost him. We oh. heard him. Don't say yeah. We lost Ted. We'll, we heard him go out. We'll we'll check back with Ted. We'll find out. I'm not opposed to FinCom. I just I don't want to muddy the waters between the opening of changing the regional agreement and which is sure. No, I. See what yeah, I'm saying? I, I do. I understand that, and I do think that FinCon needs to be involved. But if if you don't think in the very first one, um, then um, that's understandable. I just want to make sure that. Um, it well, it's, a it's an open meeting, right. so I, anybody I can show that. up. I would sure. say that you're you're going to be discussing the regional agreement. You're discussing a legal issue. Yeah. In and. Legal counsel is going to be there to inform the three communities. Yeah. Right. So I mean, I mean, yeah. obviously, it's going to require several meetings. Well, yeah. I mean, it's it's just so everybody understands from a and if I I'm going to try to get this right. First step with this is that from a procedural step, we as a school committee will after this roundtable, we want to give everybody sort of the information as to what's going on we're going to obviously have to put it as a point of conversation on our on our meeting right after that roundtable meeting we're going to need to take a vote as to whether we want to open up the regional agreement and send warrants to the towns requesting that that's step one once that's done then it's really on hold until may where the town meetings where they will vote on this um and then yes. the town meeting, they vote whether or not they want to open, open. the regional agreement. You correct? got it. Yep. So, um, and what I'm hoping is that by starting this conversation early, that we can get some consensus between the towns and the selectmen and, and hopefully the, the finance subcommittees and, and kind of get everybody on the same page where we can come up with a palpable sort of solution um, that we can take to the towns and be able to say, look, we've already met. This is what we've all agreed that it would be in the best interest. And this is what we're recommending. Um, I don't know. Obviously, it's going to either everybody's going to vote to open it um, or we're going to have one or two towns maybe say no. Um, I don't know what happens if that happens. Um, because now you're going to be stuck in a situation where we've got a law that we now know we're not following um, and a regional agreement that in order to adjust it, we need to open it. And if we don't open it, I don't know from a legal perspective how that works. Um, so that's why we've got Russ. And we'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out. Hopefully we don't get to that point. Um, but this is sort of so the first step. Could, you, could either of you um, at some point in time just direct me to where I can find that law so that I can read that law. I'll tell you right now. Give me one second. Yeah, you can go grab that. Um, okay. So, and, and then once, oh. yeah, so it, just verification. Yeah. Um, so I just want to make sure I have the numbers right. I think that you mentioned that as of right now, about $1 million of our budget is spent um, with out of district vocational tuition is that correct that is my understanding it's it's not exactly a million but it's right around that number that that's a good ballpark and did you say that approximately three hundred thousand of that one million is from sending from towns other than southwest no well no what i'm saying is that there would be a three hundred thousand dollar shift because basically right now um, granville and southwick pretty much send almost equal number of kids to the other district and Tallinn has okay. one and Tallinn has one child going out of district. So the way that the regional agreement breaks that that expense up right now is that Southwick is bearing 83% of the of that 1 million. Granville's picking up 13% of that and Tallinn's picking up 
um, 4%. Um, so if you switch that to actual, like looking at the number of kids and the financial responsibility that each town would bear, there's going to be about a $300,000 shift from Southwick and Tallinn over to Granville to, to basically break that down the way the kids are set up. Now, like I said, to try to expect the town to, to absorb that kind of adjustment all at once, I think is unfair. And I don't think anybody's looking to try to do that. Um, so, I mean, if you if we did it something where it was like a 20% sort of graduated increase over five years, then that way the towns have time to readjust. And you know what, five years from now, the numbers may be in a better situation. I mean, this is all, this is gonna change every year because as to where those numbers are. I just have a question. So out of the million, yeah. Southwick is still going to be paying for all of the kids that go to SeaTech. No, 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 well, everybody does. Right. Everybody right. pays for out of SeaTech and it's broken down the way that the regional That's agreement is. Right, right. but it's just the 300,000 is specifically for no, it's, our it, kids. it's the out of district kids. Okay. Right. 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 Because right, right now, CTEC at all is in the million dollar. Yeah. Million dollar but that's just so an example. Is not in this, no, yeah, that's just a current year. year. That's this year. Next year, could, next year could be a different. Next year year. could be different. Ten years from now, you right. could find out that Southwick's yeah. got eighty-five kids and Drainville has twelve. Right. I mean, right. so it's right. not going to affect right. that. Yeah. This year. No. 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 And right. and just so that everybody understands, this is not a thing that we can switch tomorrow. If everything goes, if everything goes according to plan. It goes to the town to vote on to open up the regional agreement in May. That allows us to, to adjust the language. Russ is going to have a suggested language adjustment to allow us to reappropriate this. Then it's got to go, and this is what I didn't talk to Russ about. I'm assuming it's got to go back to the town or go back to somebody to vote to reapprove the regional mm -hmm. agreement the way it's set up. That would be something where we'd probably be looking for a special town meeting to be able to do that because you wouldn't want to wait another following year because already if we open it up and fix it next year, it won't take effect until fiscal year 2026 because this May they're going to be voting on school the school budget for fiscal year 2025. So this year is not touched. Next year, there's going to be no difference. It's going to be the soonest that we can address this would be the year after, so fiscal year 2026. So going back to um, Erica's question, can I think February 1st or whenever we have our first meeting? Yeah. Um, and it would be if we could have approximate figures um, and per pupil yeah. cost of what um, it costs to send students to CTEC versus each of the other out of district schools that um that this sure. applies to yeah i absolutely. have that already Pam. i can give it to you i can just tell you that c-tech is about fifteen thousand, and that's covered by the school district because there's yep. still um by law it's considered in district still, yeah it's in district because they go to our school yeah. Yeah. by law um actually wta is a little over twenty thousand, and uh smith is a little over twenty thousand as well and by so WTA and Smith are the only two right now out of district that um, this scenario is applying to, correct? Yes. And it, the, it falls under uh, Mass General Law, Chapter 74, Section 7C. MGL, uh, Chapter 74, Section Se C. 7C. 7C. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And just so you know, um, I have asked, we are the only school district in Massachusetts that pays for out-of-district vocational tuitions in the school budget. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Okay. The other one's what, the town? The town's just pay. And the town's pay. And the town's pay the transportation as well. Okay. Well, that's another piece. And if, do you have... Um, oh, I don't have that I because if you don't have that right now, that's okay. But if we could have that for February 1st, that would be great. I already have it. It's about $68,000 a year. Total? Yeah. Uh, vocational transportation. What 6%. happens if a kid goes school of choice? 
School choice is not included in this. It's not. No. This because they're technically going to a different district, right? And we already pay a fee. We different. School choice is completely different than Chapter 74 vocation. So I just wanted to bring that up to everybody. This is obviously going to be a challenging sort of situation that we're going to have to work through. Um, but I think the best way through it is to be completely transparent. We get everybody at the table. I'm sure we can figure a way through this. Um, we're going to need to juggle some votes and to get some stuff done. But um, like it, 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 the situation we're at right now is going to probably be something that will look very different 10 years from now. And it may have looked very different 10 years ago, uh, which is maybe why they didn't. How long has it been set up where the school is paying for this? 12 years. 12 years. Yeah. Is that when Granville? That's when Granville came out. Yeah, so it's been doing, we've been doing this the last 12. Yeah, because I signed it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, but I need to say that the way it is written, it looks like it's referring to school choice. It does not look like it's referring to Chapter 74. Just so you know, when you read it, and I'm in education. It, so did, it looked like the it's way what is written. The regional, the, agreement. Way the regional agreement is written, or the yes. way the no, the way the <laughs> law is written is very clear. So if I okay. was to read what it says under that section in the regional agreement, I yeah. would think it would be referring to school choice. I would never in a million years have interpreted that line to include chapter 70 vocational. So, all right. So if that's so if that's the case then. If maybe we ought to get, it, is it worth getting some legal, some legal sort of advice on this? Because that's, if it, that's why you're going to have Russell. That's why we have Russell. Yeah, because it clarifies Russell Dupre. Yes, <laughs> we're talking about. It's not Russ Fox. Right. <laughs> Russ Fox stayed at you know Holiday Inn Express last night. And he was a lawyer. No, this is Russell Dupierre that that yeah. uh, that we've been in contact mm -hmm. with. Um, if if in fact that is referring to school choice and not this, then the argument could be made that the regional agreement is silent on this. And if it's silent on it, you don't need to open it up to do it. You just need to do a notification and say, look, we've identified something that was missed or over, it was overlooked or for whatever reason wasn't appropriated correctly 12 years ago. And just to let you know, I am aware of another school district where they um, they only had one or two students who went out of district. So the school was just incorporating it into their budget. Um, it's becoming greater. Yeah. So um, they went back, they looked at their regional agreement, and it specifically says that it's to be paid for by because it's okay. two towns. Yeah. Um, so it's it's. Even though it was past practice, it was specified clearly in their regional agreement, so you can go back to it. The problem is ours is a little vague, and so they're relying on past practice. But when I read it, and I've read it again, and I've read it again, I think if you look at that regional agreement as a whole, if you look at where it talks about vocational tuition, it says that we're going to establish our own. And then when it says the other one, it says students who attend any public school as of October 1st. That's school choice. Because chapter 74 uh, is different than school choice. I think that you're going to have a hard time making that case because it is truly vague in any public school, WTA and Smithville would fall under that category. Right, but there's but there is another vocational section in the regional agreement. That's I'm not an attorney. I'm just saying I agree, but I still think. I, I don't think that's a tree that we should bark up. I don't I think that we've done a really, really good job moving forward from some really bad blood um amongst towns. I think that we've passed that. I think that we've established ourselves as a very respectable transparent school district. I think that we have earned some some hard earned uh respect and I wouldn't want to do anything to jeopardize that. Yeah, and, and me either, Pam. And I think if 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 everybody even if we go down a road that let's say we're we're going to get let's say we take this to the towns and we don't need to but we do anyway when we open up the regional agreement and we fix it 
great. It, it literally it's going to delay it a year. And in the big scheme of things, that's not that's not the end of the world. So I, I'm with you. I mean, it's it's hopefully if everybody like I said if that at that roundtable meeting if everybody comes going all right look. So what the law says is we're going to figure out how do we get from A to B without anybody getting crazy, and how do we figure this out? And if we can get through that, then we might be able to. We might be able to just. I'm not going to say it's going to be easy, but we might be able to get through this and use some of that earned respect and transparency and show everybody that we're doing this the right way, and and then we can get through this and move on. So, but anyway, so we will try to get this set up for February first. Um, this will certainly be a topic that we will be discussing shortly thereafter. Um, we'll make sure that we have the numbers and all those things available for the meeting. And ideally, Pam, what we'll do is we'll get those out to the to um, the, the people that are coming before the meeting. Um, so, they've, so they've got a chance to see that. Copy of the law, copy of the, um, you know, the tuitions and the finances, yeah. probably get a copy of the, the regional agreement and the sections that apply, yeah. all of those things you know, out in advance. Yep. Yeah, we should. We have to be but, transparent. Yeah, we, oh, well, I mean. Always. So we, wouldn't, we, we wouldn't be having the meeting if we didn't want to be transparent. Right. right. I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's the only way I want to do this, so. Okay. Anyone got any questions, other comments on this? All right, perfect. Well, Pam, your record still stands. Uh, new business. <laughs> yeah, that's just new business. Do we have any more new business? I just wanted to plant a seed. Yes, sir. Public relations. Yeah. I've had different people, you know, come up to me, you know, what's going on at the school, what's good. They don't know. They don't know. Uh, and some of the uh, news media spoke to them about what, what are they doing with other schools, things yeah. like that. And they said they'd be willing to to work with us to uh, promote different programs going on in the school, anything mm -hmm. new, a play, uh, you know, any and helping out seniors. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Yeah. I'd love to see that on the front page of the newspaper. You know, mm -hmm. and it's transparency, but it's also letting people know what's going on, you know, because this is the big part of the budget. So I would tell people to get on and join our Facebook page. Because our Facebook page will really keep you up to date almost daily about what's happening in our schools. And it had a big article um, about the seniors helping seniors. It tells about the plays. It talked about the kids enjoying recess. Every day, there's usually something so about what's in happening. Charge, in who's in charge of updating that Facebook page? Aaron does. Okay. So if we, if we do that, if we're doing that anyway, is there any reason we can't take what we put on that Facebook page and send out like a press release or whatever to the to news Westfield news. news just so that they've got it and at least kind of remind them that we've we've uploaded this and this That'd is what be a it great is. idea. I mean if we're already doing it. Then they could follow up if they want more information. Yeah. And then Russ, to your point, you know, when people ask you, hey, you know, like how do I how do I know what's going on in the schools, especially if they don't have children in the schools, mm -hmm. I think that all of us our general default should be, hey, check out the check out the, out the Facebook pages. Yeah. You know, yeah. daily updates and it's and it's a lot of great news. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe if we just do a story on the Facebook page, <laughs> you know, and, and get that on the front page. Right. You know. <laughs> All right. Well, that's uh, certainly a point well taken. So I think we'll again. I'm just planting the seeds. Make sure you well, got it's, it. You know what? It's all good stuff. All right. Anybody got it? anything else for new business? All right, I will entertain a motion to adjourn at this point. Oh, second. So in. So <laughs> All right, uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Pam? Yes. Brian? Yes. Erica? Yes. Russ? Yes. Rob said yes. Motion passes 500. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you.